and there's a place called Shade Hill Resort. So we thought, oh, this looks like a good place to stop and let the dog out. So we drove in there, and it, it kind of has a real primitive camping or whatever, and we kind of drove around the bend, and it's just all gravel road, and my husband goes, it looks like a cell phone on the, on the ground. So we um, went over to check it out, and it was, it was a, a digital camera, you know, a nice little Olympus, and it's like, oh, what the heck, you know, and there's nobody around. So, you know, we didn't want to leave it there, so we took it with. So when we got down, uh, my other son lives in Rapid City, so when we got down to his apartment, of course, the, the card, you know, the memory card, wasn't the same as my camera, so we went to Walmart, and I bought <laughs> a reader, so we could, you know, see what's on here, curiosity, you know, so we look, and it's this guy, start, the pictures start about the 8th or 9th of July, and it, it appears that he's all by, you know, on, on a vacation by himself, but he has these amazing pictures from up in Alaska. He he's mm -hmm. kayaking all by himself. Mm -hmm. He had uh, it was just amazing pictures and videos. So between videos and pictures, he had 455. Was he in some of the pictures? Yes. And it's like, oh, this guy has just got to be set, you know, his you know this whole vacation. And I'm thinking, and and you know everything was dated. Of course, um, we get to the last picture, and it was taken the day before we found the camera. And some of the, one of the last pictures, he made a reference. Uh, he had some pictures of some buffalo, and he referenced Mile City, so we knew he had to be in Montana. So you know, had gone through there. You know, the pictures, and there was one picture where he had taken. He, it looked like he was on a ferry, and he had taken a picture of a tote. And in the background, there was a red pickup. And in another picture somewhere, there was also a red pickup. So we're thinking, okay, this could be his pickup. So I'm zooming in, you know, to see if we can get the license plate. And we got it, we zoomed it enough where we got the license plate number, and it was an Alaska license plate. So we thought, okay, well, when we, I get home, we're going to do some checking. And we have a highway patrolman that was across the street. And so we called him and, and asked him if he could, you know, run a check on this person. So he, they, he ended up calling the person, and it was a, a lady and husband up in Alaska, and she said, no, that wasn't our, you know, it wouldn't have been his camera, because, but he was on a fishing trip, and, and it's not his. Oh, shoot, you know, I'm a couple nights later, I just sit down, I'm going through pictures again. I mean, we've gone through them like three times. And um, on some of the videos, he was referencing, um, like, oh, Here's the lodge at Elfin Cove, and this is where I'm staying tonight. So I'm writing down all these different places that he's talking about. So I went on the internet and looked up Elfin Cove and found uh, number two a lodge up there. So we called up there and to see if they had any record of this. We knew the day he was up there, and they didn't have anything. And she said, well, I'll call another lodge. So we did that, dead end, talked to them. And I run across a picture that is of a camp in, in a campground where it's a post and where you reserve them and they put a name on. But prior to that, there was a picture of a card that he had gotten from somebody. It had the envelope and had a name on their mark. And then in the inside, it was um, from a friend of his wishing him good luck on his sabbatical and, you know, can't wait till you get home and da da da, whatever. So we figured his name is Mark. Well, there was this camp. Um, post and it had on there A for arrival, D for departure, 713, and that was the day the picture was taken. And on there it had Larson. So I figured, okay, his name's got to be Mark Larson. So then the next th clue we had was there was a number on the post that you could call to reserve the campsite, a 1877 number. So I called the <laughs> number. <laughs> and it, it's through like the Forest Street, it's like a government deal. So anyway, she got me to customer service and I was telling her the story, you know, I'm trying to find this guy. Can you look in your database? I said, I know he was in Alaska. This is the date. This is, we're thinking his name. And she goes, oh, I don't know without having the campsite. I don't know if I can find it or not. So she said, I'll try. So she puts in, she's getting all excited too, you want to find this guy. So she puts it in and she comes back and she goes, oh, I found him. So do you want me to call him? Because 
they obviously had his, his number. And I said, well, sure. So she comes back and says, no, nobody answered. And I told her, I said, oh, I don't think he's going to be home. I think he's on a pretty long journey here. So she came back and said, nobody answered. But he did leave, or there's an answering machine. So I can leave your number and he can call you. And I said, oh, that's just great. So she called back again. She's gone forever. <laughs> First time she comes back and she said, well, I called the number again and he answered. So he must have had a cell phone. Mm -hmm. You know, she had a cell phone number. And she said, would you like to talk to him? I can connect you with him. And I said, sure. So I got to talk to him. And he's like, and he's just amazed. He, he was like speechless. Mm -hmm. And I said, Monday morning, he called. He was like 20 minutes out of Bismarck. So we met up with Matone, got his camera to him. And it's like, OK, I get out of the vehicle. It's like, yep, you look like the guy in these pictures. So you can have the camera. <laughs> But it, he was just, yeah, he was pretty happy. He got his camera back, and he had just bought it oh, you know, right. for this trip. And, you know, he is just kayaking all over up there, these places where you can't drive. So I asked him, well, what do you do? Well, he said he works for Nike out in Portland, mm -hmm. and Nike gives their employees every five, ten years a sabbatical. Wow. And it, it was his time, mm -hmm. you know, for that. So. He went on this trip all by himself. Did you feel like a CSI or a detective? I did. I think I watched too much CSI on TV, but it's just fun. It's like, we're on a mission. We've got to find this guy. You know, and I told him when he left, I said, no, don't lose your camera because we're not going to be there to find it this time. <laughs> <laughs> I think I watched too much TV. But